waited for years I harvested tears for every glass on the shelf I wanted to tell but I buried my fears Forsaking my mental and my physical health But now that the fever has begun to fade I'm drawing a line under time that we made And I'm ready to steal something that feels like real we've gone to down to London to have this kind of a summit meeting between the two of us at Christmas um, to talk about doing this album. Yeah. Um, but that, as you know, what happens next, you know, by the start of, after shortly after New Year, we weren't able to get together. Now, I, I, I spoke to Stephen Haig about doing um, proper production start down at his place in Sussex. Mm -hmm. And then next thing I knew, my train, train ticket was no good. And we had to quickly put together a a remote production schedule. Yeah. Do you think, I mean, you know, no spoilers because oh. some of you will have bought it but not heard it yet. We take it out to the design. It's a fucking great record. Yeah. <laughs> it's a really, really great record. And I got lucky because I got to listen to it early. They sent to me while I was on holiday in Greece. So we're going through the lovely mountains and I'm here in Token and going, this is great. I feel like I'm in a video. Um, did you, when you were making it, did you feel that um, the lockdown situation um, change the way that you wrote and the way that you related to each other? Well, the way that we related, I mean, certainly it, it, it obviously changed the way we related to each other. It's hard to, when, you, when you're talking to people on the phone only, you, you miss the sort of the nuances and facial expressions and stuff. Everything became slightly more intense. Yes. Not always in a bad way, mind. I mean, like we, we, I mean, Sarah and I never fall out, but we would quarrel about things more. Um, <laughs> just, just because there was the, the lack of, uh, you know, the reassuring. The, yes facial expression or something but but also because the, the atmosphere was intense because of the pandemic we knew we had an important job to do despite that yeah and we also because we felt like it was really good you know um we felt we felt like we were really under some some good stuff and we just needed to get make it happen yeah you know? so. if we felt like you know things that could have been solved in an afternoon in a studio between us in, in, in a bubble as it were mm. took about three weeks because it felt like a pipeline rather than a yeah. bubble so yes yeah. Yeah. and softer sands A tight plan To sharpen the knife And hide the underhand and If they close the ride I can see you outside Seeing through the road signs And beyond the fog lines When they close the ride to take sides and delete the old crimes or explain the high tide. So tonight we've heard, as well as some acoustic versions of Abdul Star Classics, we've heard Token, the biggest, grandest piece of pop music that you put out, rendered in the acoustic style, yeah. showing the the, the, the the beauty of the song and so forth. So, so tell, tell, us about, tell us about Token. Because as a, as a kind of flagship singer, it's a, it's, a, it's a beauty. Yeah, I suggested that for acoustic, didn't I? And you went, no. Yeah, no, I, I, I just didn't think it would work. Just, work. Like, no, just, just try it. Let's, let's just do it. You know, I mean, I, I have no perception of like how how difficult it is to, you know, transfer a, a, a song to, you know, a, a beautiful acoustic version. Well, in this instance, we just did like it as if we were Dave Edmonds, you know. <laughs> 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 sort of country guitar and, you know. Like, yeah. you know but, um, no, it was, um, yeah, I mean, it, it worked much better. And it was, it was a good suggestion of service to, to do it. You kind of, you realise that actually it's, even though, I mean, we worked really hard on the production of that uh, with Stephen, um, it does have uh, qualities of its own. Yeah. And you can hear the words. Um, and so, like, it, it, it pulls the focus on the words, which is nice. Yeah. Do you think of it as a country song? No, just, no, I just, I could tell. I like, you know. No, but, I mean, funny, just when you said that, it made me think it is... The, the great country songs are about I'm leaving you to fulfil myself I'm going out into the world and that's what country music is about isn't it yeah. a whole load of divorce songs in country and it's oh, like yeah. yeah I get that country and northern do you know I should have put some Dolly Parton on the play <laughs> <laughs> yeah. love Dolly you know, it's, it's funny because like, sometimes one of the things you can do when you're trying to work out if the song's going to work mm. is just on its own is to try to do a country version of it I'm not, I'm not, you don't need to switch this on but I mean for instance like a and I hate the way you look at my shoe. <laughs> I 
was something new the last time I came. There was, a, you know, and it, and, and if it, can you just it, keep going? That was great. Let me see you. 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 Let me is it asking too much of my vacant smile and my laugh and lies that bring them? But as the stars are going out and this stage is full of nothing and the friends have all but gone for my life, my God, I'm singing. We'll take our hearts Leave our lives behind I'll watch the stars go out We'll take our hearts outside Leave our lives behind I'll watch the stars go out Back in touch with Stephen and how it helped to shape this record I'd sort of kept in touch with him because he's he's a neighbour in Hastings mm -hmm. so sometimes you know, he'd ring me and say do you fancy doing a cover of a Pet Shop Boys song just this afternoon, just, yeah, all right. So I just nip round his house and we'd, you know, have an afternoon of just singing and stuff. So we did that, you know, a couple of times a year, something like that. And also he produced some stuff in Client as well. There was a couple of yeah. songs he did in Client, which is my other band, if nobody knows. Um, <laughs> so, we, so we'd always had something sort of, you know, bubbling under. There was always something, yeah. you know. What does he bring out of you? Because some of the best Dust Star records are also on with Stephen. It's really interesting because it uh, can just like move his head <laughs> and, and I'll sing something differently or he'll just make it more and I do. <laughs> so whatever voodoo that is, I don't That's know. That's non-verbal communication, which again must have been difficult when it's all being done on Zoom. Well, yeah, no, actually when lockdown lifted, hmm. I bombed it down to Hastings. And we just put like two weeks in the diary where we just did all the vocals, mm. um, or as much as we could, and then the rest was done on, on Zoom. The wind's whistling, my mind's twisting. I was making myself the usual cup of tea when the doorbell strangely rang. I staggered, shaking slowly to the door. Through the frosted panel I could see you Your intentions as a salesman truly cush You and David is a psycho just to push A whilst lifting and throwing to the wall My puny structure of an aging OAP No reason why you chose my flat Breathing deeply in a trance whistling my mind's twisting I was making myself the usual cup of tea when the doorbell strangely rang I'm not so manic now I'm not so manic now I'm not so manic now I'm not so manic Music media at the time. Loads of magazines arrived. Loads of co loads of coverage that had never existed before. Mm. You know, big pop columns and tabloids. And, and, and you were part of that. And you described to me how it was it was uh, a whirlwind, and it slightly did your head in. Do you look back? How do you look back on it now? Do you think was that really me? Oh God, it wasn't me at all. Mm. Well, it obviously was. But um, mm. yeah, it's it's very sort of easy to judge the nineties through the prism of today. Because you look back and you, you know, at the time we all thought that we were like, you know, beating the men at their own game. But I think looking back, you realise you were just playing by their rules again. Yeah. And um, and it's really nice to see that I think the music industry certainly has changed quite a lot because you know you've got wet leg now and you've got you know, let's see grandma and like amazing young women just being themselves and coming through and it's just yeah it's really it's really fantastic but I think at the time there was a 
I never got any pressure, and I'm really grateful to Andy and everyone at Food that I was never made to feel like I wasn't thin enough or pretty enough or whatever. But I think there was that underlying pressure from the media. I mean, I can I can remember being in America, and I remember going to a shoot, and <laughs> the girl, she was like. I was up at four. I was like, so was I. But I was up from the night before drinking with Chris. She was up at four because she went to the gym. And we got to this shoot and all the clothes, I couldn't fit into any of the clothes because they were model size and I was a size 12. And, she's, and she was like, well, you should be able to fit into the clothes. You're a singer, you know, you're, you're, you're an entertainer. You should be a size eight or size four, whatever. I don't know what it was. And I was just like, oh my God, it was just, it was awful. Yeah. Absolutely awful. And then you know you did you did like the loaded shoots and they'd, they'd come out with like the rail of clothes that they wanted you to wear. And there'd be a bikini. You'd be like, fuck off. <laughs> Chris can wear that. <laughs> <laughs> you did wear false eyelashes once, didn't you? Yeah, for, I didn't know what happened to those pictures. <laughs> Very modern guy. Yeah. Thank you so much. sober for 15 years yes um how do you feel about that you know your you know did, do you think your issue came from within you or it came from the things that were around you oh it was in me i think but yeah no it was actually both it was my reaction to like what was good it, it wasn't the music industry because i was like that before yeah but it was just kind of accepted behavior in the music industry you kind of encouraged to it's not encouraged but you know it's, it's sort of part of the course isn't it rock and roll yeah except for me it wasn't rock and roll because I was, you know, I, I just couldn't control it. Yeah. You know, I think that a lot of people they, they, they do it and it's, it's kind of play acting and they can handle it, but like some of us, you know. So I'm really glad that I I was intervened and yeah. managed to get the help that I needed. And you got some good advice from Carl Verrat. I did. Old yes. People. Yes. We were at Basel uh, Art Festival. I just went to say, oh, yeah, I think it's time you got yourself to rehab, dear. <laughs> Oh, but one of the libertines is saying that, you can't even know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I saw, I saw a documentary about Guns N' Roses where Duff McKagan's like, when Slash tells you you're drinking too much, you know, you're fucking drinking too much. I thought that when she said that, you know, it's like, Sarah, that means it's time. You know. Yeah, yeah. When they close the ride, you won't need to take sides. 